Um, so you just find your passion through graphic design then? Yeah, uh, I mean, so a bizarre thing that my dad did whenever I was growing up, uh, every holiday he would get both my brother and I, he would get us a gift that related to something that could be a hobby. Okay. He, he thought hobbies were really important. And he, you know, every year would get us something different. Uh, one year he got me a guitar, which I was terrible at. That didn't last. Uh, and when I was 17 years old, he bought me a camera. Okay. He bought me a 35 millimeter camera. I became obsessed with it. And so I actually found photography early on. Mm-hmm. And that kind of got me into the world of marketing. Gotcha. And then from the world of marketing, I believe that kind of pushed me towards graphic design. Yeah. I, it, it's hard to tell which one came first, but yeah. they're all kind of hand in hand. Like design is design right. is design right. is design. Yeah. So. And then they said it all kind of ties back to marketing because mm-hmm. you can kind of like I have a degree in marketing. I, I say that I don't think I've ever used it, but I do. I use it every day oh, yeah. probably, right? But you have to use it all the, the time. The stuff <laughs> that I learned, I actually don't think I use that every day at all. Like you know, the four Ps or five Ps or whatever, mm-hmm. how many other Ps there are, you know, like it's just like, I mean, you just don't think about it, but you probably do. I do use it mm-hmm. um, <laughs> as much as my marketing professors probably like, you use it every day. Stop saying you don't. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you kind of just pick up the love for photography, mm-hmm. which is, I mean, one of the hobbies that continually like just, just, you can't just pick it up and be good at it, right? Because then something changes. It goes from film. It goes to, like, it does. It's never ending. There's it? a lot of learning. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so when I first got that very first camera, I tried out all of um, the different genres. Mm-hmm. I tried landscape, which I, I still love landscape. We travel yeah. a lot. I still love to photograph landscape. That's kind of a personal mm-hmm. thing. I tried portraits. I tried wedding. And while I was... I was decent at them. I just wasn't quite as passionate about mm-hmm. them. And um, when I worked for that architecture firm, they said, you, you know, you're pretty good at photography. Yeah. Do you want to try photographing our projects? I was terrible at photographing projects initially. <laughs> you have a camera. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So if I could show you what my first handful of images looked like, you'd yeah. probably laugh. But everybody has to start somewhere. You have to mm-hmm. learn. Um, and architectural photography is, I, I personally think, is one of the most challenging yeah. uh, genres mm-hmm. of photography out For there. Sure. And so there was a lot of learning, a lot of reading, a lot of researching, um, mm-hmm. a lot of trial and error. Yeah. But here I am. <laughs> you're, you're right, though. Like, I, I know that, I guess, the most recent posts on your Instagram when we were recording this, you did like a, which is a building with the sky and the right mm-hmm. sun in the right place, right? The sun setting. But I remember seeing in your story yep. this week, you were like, this is what happens when I show up at a totally different time. The building looks completely yep. different. Absolutely. And dealing with like, I mean, sadly, you can't move the building. You've got to wait for the sun to be right. in the right position, which uh, is a constant battle. Absolutely. And on that project, um, you know, the marketing team was like, we always photograph our buildings in the morning. And I had a feeling, yeah. uh, you know, that it wasn't going to work. We showed up, we woke up at 5 a.m. to get there. And of course there was like this beautiful sunrise, but it was happening behind me. It was not in frame. Yeah. So I like to use those examples to show people why mm-hmm. I try to, to schedule things at certain times of the day, because Definitely. it's things that if, if you're not a photographer and you don't deal with you it on a daily it. basis, you don't think about it. No, not yeah. at all. And like taking pictures at noon is the worst time. Absolutely. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, I know that much yeah. about photography and a, a good friend of mine kind of, does the same yep. you know, architectural stuff and he's like yeah it's like late, early or late right yep like, absolutely you know, but and he started in kind of residential shooting mm-hmm. houses and he's like like I need and his kind of vice and getaway is the architecture stuff because he mm-hmm. gets bored shooting houses which I mean I would too if you shoot 10 houses a day and it's the same house every time yeah <laughs> uh, but you're right like the creative kind of side from the architecture and photography it's really really cool and I guess from that moment then you just kind of I guess initially you're like, I don't think I'm good at this. I need to get better and learn if they're Mm going to give me the opportunity. You probably didn't think they'd give you the opportunity first. And then when someone says, hey, you should go photograph buildings, it's like a okay moment that like, okay, I need to improve at this. It honestly, it it never never even occurred to me that this was um, a career. Uh I started doing this really, really early on and there were not a lot of architectural Mm -hmm. photographers at that time. Um, So it, I really never considered that this could be a career path for me ever yeah. until I kind of dove in head first. I became a little obsessed with it, mm-hmm. um, as a lot of creatives do. Uh, and 
yeah, I just tried to find as much information out there as possible, which there was not a ton at that time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just immersed myself in it until I, until like I learned as much as I could and I'm still learning because it's constantly changing, like you mentioned earlier. So when did you get to the point then where you were still at the architecture firm and you think, I'm actually being booked to shoot so much and traveling like that it's not worth me working right now. So that actually, that is actually not what happened. Okay. Um, so I, I worked in their marketing department and uh, I did all things visual for them. So okay. I would design like their proposals. I worked on their website. Um, I ran their social media. I photographed, um, I took their headshots. Mm-hmm. I photographed all their finished projects and um, anything that was visual that related to architecture, that's what I did for them. So I wasn't booking any outside gigs at the time because because you had so much other stuff to do. Well, that would be a conflict of interest too if I were promoting other architects' work. Um, So I decided that I loved that Mm-hmm. more than any other part of my job. Yeah. I still enjoy the other things. I still enjoy like designing proposals and all that fun stuff, but the photography was what I loved the most. So I decided that I wanted to try and go out on my own and see if it would work. Yeah. Um, because I don't know, like I didn't want to look back in 10 years and always wonder. Yeah. So I decided to give it a shot and I... I, I was very honest with my boss. I let her know, this is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And um, at the end of the year, I, I'm going to be leaving. Right. So I had several months to prepare. She was really cool about it. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I just I started working on all of my business stuff and had it ready to go for January 1st. Yeah. And I held my breath <laughs> and hoped that people would knock right. on the door and or email me or yeah. whatever. And it somehow worked out. I, I'm not entirely certain what yeah. I did right, but it worked out. And that's awesome. That's great to I was have. Very like, lucky. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. But 